Bela Balassa was an important development economist who was born in Hungary in 1928 and who passed away in 1991. He fled Hungary after the 1956 anti-communist revolt and moved to the United States. He taught for a long time at Johns Hopkins University and did a great deal of work for the World Bank. I am very pleased to have known Bella's wife, Carol Balassa, who is a wonderful companion and who has been a friend of mine. Let's now talk about Bella Balassa's greatest contribution to economic thought. Bella Balassa wanted to explain why services are more expensive in some countries than in other countries. For instance, if you are in Norway, a typical haircut costs about $65, which of course is very expensive. If you are in Mexico, it is not difficult to get a good haircut for $5 or less, which of course is not nearly as expensive. What might account for this difference? This was one of the questions that drove Bella Balassa. He concluded that it had a great deal to do with labor productivity. So labor overall was more productive in Norway than in Mexico in most economic sectors. Norway is a richer country. It has a higher standard of living. It is better geared up for productive business for export. So imagine that we have barbers in Mexico and barbers in Norway. To get a barber to work in Norway, well, that barber or potential barber has the option of earning a lot more money in some other sector, say the oil sector. Whereas a barber in Mexico doesn't have the same or comparable options to earn a lot of money in other sectors because the other sectors in Mexico are not nearly as productive. If you look, for instance, at oil companies in Norway compared to Mexico, in Norway the sector is more efficient. In Mexico, in the oil company, the state company Pemex, there is more political patronage, costs are higher, they're not nearly as good at exploration and discovery, they're not as good as, at marketing, and that's all an indication of the inefficiency in the Mexican economy. Now, how does this all relate back to barbers? When you look at barbers, barbers in Mexico are actually about as productive as barbers in Norway. It's not like working in the oil sector, where Norway is more productive than Mexico. If you go to a barber in Mexico, the basic technology is scissors, comb, and razor. If you go to a barber in Norway, the basic technology is scissors, comb, and razor. So there's a productivity equality for the barbers across Norway and Mexico. But in other sectors, like oil, there's greater productivity in Norway. Uh, that means that the payment to Norwegian barbers has to be higher to get them to do the work of cutting your hair. And it means if you're a tourist, let's say you're traveling, you're taking a trip to Norway, you're taking a trip to Mexico, in which country should you get your hair cut? Of course, you should get your hair cut in Mexico. Of course, this is not only a story about barbers. It is also a story of personal servants. So it is common in Mexico for a middle or upper middle class family to employ some number of servants. It is not equally common in Norway for a middle-class family to employ servants. Why is that? It's the same reasoning all over again. Norwegian labor is more productive in some sectors, so to hire that labor to work for you as a personal servant or as a barber, it's simply going to cost more money. So there are some sectors, such as barbering or personal servants, where the productivity across nations really doesn't vary all that much because it's the same technology, basically similar production methods. And in those cases, the poorer countries will produce those services much more cheaply than you will find them produced and sold in the wealthier countries, such as Norway or the United States. One implication of Balas's thesis is that a lot of poorer countries may be somewhat wealthier than the published st statistics indicate. Why is that? Well, it's the case that in these poor countries, a lot of services have very low prices. So the standard of living may be somewhat higher than a quick, crude, or naive look at the numbers would indicate. So just to sum up, what are the lessons behind Balassa's theory about exchange rates and relative prices? One, get your hair cut in poorer countries. Two, if you live in a poorer country, you are more likely to employ personal servants. Three, the theoretical point. There are some sectors where wealthier countries are much more productive, 
and other sectors where the wealthier countries, such as Norway, really aren't more productive at all, such as barbering. Four, be very careful about using economic statistics, because countries differ in many ways, and in some ways poorer countries have cheaper services for people to be able to afford. Uh, Bella Balassa had other contributions. He wrote a wonderful book on economic integration in Europe. He also was well known for writing actually a dining guide to Paris, which he circulated to many other economists. But this is Balassa's best-known contribution. It also comes from some work from other important economists, such as Paul Samuelson and Roy Harrod. But that, in a nutshell, is why Bella Balassa is an important development economist.